Please be seated, everyone. Okay, Mr. Mullis, do you want to come back up and retake the stand for cross-examination, please? You took an oath yesterday. Do you understand that you're still under oath? Yes, I do. Okay, very good. Cross-examination. <coughs> Excuse me. Todd, you bought your farm in 1999, correct? My first farm, yes. And that was before you met Amy? Yes, it was. And when you say your first farm, how many farms do you currently have? Oh, I own three and I own part of another one. And then your dad is a farmer? Yes, he is. And your dad's farm is right next to <clears throat> yours? Is that correct? No. How far is your dad's farm from yours? My dad's farm is two and a half, three miles. And your brother, Pat Mullis, is a farmer? Yes, he is. And where is his farm in relation to yours? Uh, northeast. How, how far? Uh, four to five miles. And then Mike Mullis, your brother that we heard from yesterday, also has a farm? Yes, he is. And where is his farm in relation to yours? We're, uh, they're all within three miles. I think yesterday he said about two miles or so. <clears throat> it depends which farm you're talking about. And even though you have your farm and your dad and your brothers have their farm, you kind of all farm together. Yes. Would that be fair to say? In, yes. And over the years, you've continued to purchase land? Yes. And you've worked on your business, obviously? Yes. And this is your livelihood? Yes. And it means a lot to you, correct? Yes. And you spend a lot of time farming? Yes. And you didn't initially have the hog barns, correct? I had older ones. And then you got new hog barns, would that be fair to say? Yes. And when was that? The first one was in 2012. And then when did you, so I know you have two hog bar barns currently, correct? Where I live, yes. And when did you get that second one? In 2014. And then the hog barn business, is this... Do you, Pat, Mike, and your dad, are you all part of that? The two at where I live? Yes. I own them. And does Mike also have a hog barn? Yes. And does your dad and Pat also have hog barns? Pat does not. And you've continued to purchase more land, like you said, correct? Yes. And you love being a farmer? Yes. And, in fact, when you, um, you've talked about before about how your dad is so proud of you and your brothers for being farmers. I, I, I've heard him say he's proud of it, yeah. And Tristan was really getting into farming with you, correct? Yes. In the last couple of months before Amy's death? Uh, his whole life. And specifically, though, wasn't he taking more of an interest in the last couple of months? Helping out a little bit more? I would say in the last couple of years, he's helped out more. And um, he would help out on the weekends? Yes. And after school? Yes. And the only people that worked on your farm were you, Tristan, and Amy, correct? No, the younger two helped too. Taylor and Wyatt. Yes. I'm sorry, Taylor and Wyatt at times helped. Yes, they did. And I know that sometimes you and your, you would help your brothers or they would help you. Yes. But you didn't have any hired workers? No. And your farm is your legacy, correct? It's what you want to pass on to your children? If they want to farm. And, well, you, you talked to Agent Turbot, and you talked about how Tristan told you he wants to be a farmer someday. Yes. And how you're so excited that he wants to be a farmer. Right? If, if he, I told him if he wants to be a farmer, then I would help him farm. And you would, pa you would pass on your farm to Tristan or any of your kids if they wanted to farm? Yes. And when you and Amy married, was it 2004? Yes. And Amy is part of your family trust, correct? Yes, she is. And, you, uh, and your, your whole family is part of that, is that correct? I'm sorry, your parents are part of that? Mm, no. Okay, so I'm sorry, so your trust, it's just you and Amy, is that right? Yes. Now, you, um, 
You have a Gleamer combine, correct? Yes. And you, you have tractors? Yes. And you, I know you told us yesterday you like to hunt. Yes. And you, you like to do all kinds of hunting and fishing. I think you indicated you like to go to the creek or crick. Is that right? Yes, with the kids, yes. And back when this happened in November 2018, you had a flip phone, correct? Yes. And you couldn't access the Internet from your flip phone? No. And Amy had a, um, uh, a smartphone? Yes. Where she could access the Internet? Yes. And I, I believe Tristan also had a phone, is that correct? Mm-hmm. Is that yes. a yes? Yes. And Taylor and Wyatt, did they have phones at that time? Uh, Taylor had a phone. And were they track phones? I think Taylor's was. And Tristan's was also a, t a type of track phone where you had to buy minutes or something? Uh, yeah, I think you had to buy a card. Now, we talked a lot about the first affair that Amy had. You remember talking about that yesterday? Yes. And at the time that Amy had this affair, she was working at the hospital. Yes. And you indicated that after this affair, it was Amy's decision to stop, to work, stop working. Yes. She wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Yes. And she just wanted to be there for the kids. She wanted to be there for the kids and us. And you. And all the kids were full-time in school at that time, correct? No. Um, who was not? Wyatt. How old is Wyatt now? He now is nine. Okay, so when he was five, he wasn't in school? He was three. And where, was he in preschool or any type of schooling? Not at that time. What, when did he start going to school? I think he went when he was uh, four. I think he went to pre. You, you talked yesterday. Amy loved to go shopping. She loved to go out. She loved to be social. Yes. She loved to go out to lunch. Yes. She loved to golf. Yes. And you encouraged all of these things, you said. Yes. You wanted her to get out there and do these things. If it made her happy, yes. And... Um, it was, you indicated yesterday, it was Amy's decision to leave the hospital. Yes, she asked to. And it, you know Amy met the person that she had the affair with at the hospital, correct? I don't know if they met at the hospital or not. Okay, so you and Amy were so open about your relationship, right, after this happened? Yes. So you, you told us yesterday, you told Detective Turbot on November 16th, 2018, that after you guys reconciled, mm -hmm. it was picture perfect, essentially, right? Yes. It was a great relationship. Yes. You used the words over and over how open it was. Yes. And you never talked to Amy about how she met this person that she had an affair with. She either met at, a hos at the hospital or at a, a boating event. Okay. That was organized together with people at the hospital. So okay, so somehow she met him through the hospital. Yes. So now you do remember that. Yes. Now, let's talk about November 16th, 2000, or I'm sorry, November 10th, 2018. That morning, you said that you, you, would, you just wanted to do some chores around the house, which was normal. Right? Can you ask that I'm again? I'm sorry. On November 10th, 2018, the day of Amy's murder, you wanted, in that morning, you got up to do chores. Yes. And you were with Tristan. Yes. And you and Tristan went, I think you said, off-site. Yes. And you came back. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that a yes? And when you came back, Amy was doing a puzzle. Yes. Amy, at that point, seemed fine. Yes. And, in fact, Amy had plans later in the day to go shopping, correct? Yes, she did. She was going to go with Taylor and buy some snow boots. Yes. And then Amy, you said it was Amy's decision to come outside. She asked to come out and if we needed help. She wanted to help. And uh, you and Tristan went out first. Yes. And you guys started working around the barn. Yes. You were doing some things. Is that yes? Yes. Tristan was, uh, I know, bringing heaters, correct? Yes. And then Amy started um, helping as well. Yes. And you indicated that Amy got dizzy. Yes. And Tristan saw it. Yes. And then you saw it too. Yes. And at that point, you were really worried about her. I was concerned at that time, yes. Right. Obviously, this is your wife. You care about her. Yes. You didn't want anything to happen to her? No. And you knew that she had this procedure four days ago? Yes. And at that point, after the first time, you didn't tell her to go inside. 
I asked if she was okay. And she said yes. Yes. And she wanted to stay out there. Yes. So she again started working. Yes. And at that time, she gets dizzy again. Yes. And I'm sure at this point you're extremely concerned about her. Yes, I was concerned. I don't know if I was extremely concerned. I just asked if she was okay. Well, you were so concerned you told her to stop working. I asked if she needed to go to the house. And she said yes? She said no. I so then you, that's when you said, you know what, I just want you to stop, but first, let's go get that pet carrier. It was after two to three, um, three or four times of asking her. Okay, so just so that we're clear, at least twice yes. you know she's dizzy. Yes. And probably you just said three or four times you asked her to go in the house. I asked if she was okay and to go to the house. Okay. And if, Amy if kept, she needed to. If, if she needed If she to. could continue. And she yeah. kept insisting she just wanted to be out there and working. Yes. And then at that point you say, well, actually yesterday you said, Tristan said, hey, you mm -hmm. know what, Mom? If you can help us or you can help us go get that pet carrier. Yes. So Tristan sends Amy to get the pet carrier. He didn't send her. He asked. Hey, I'm sorry. It was, it was his a idea. conversation between it was his all idea. of us. I'm sorry. It was a conversation between all of us. Oh, between all of you. So who asked Amy to go get the pet carrier? Who asked Amy? It was both of us, really. Okay. Yesterday you testified, right? Yes. And yesterday when you testified, you said Tristan said or Tristan asked Amy to go get the pet carrier. You recall that, right? He asked her first, and then I asked her Okay, second. so first Tristan asked her, then you asked her. Yes. And the pet carrier is, is pretty big, right? What's big, I guess. Well, okay, you heard Tristan's testimony, correct? Yes. And uh, when you t Tristan said that he probably estimated it was 15 or 20 pounds. He said it was 15 pounds. Okay, would you, would you agree with that? I would say it's be 10 to 15 pounds, yes. Sorry, just one moment. Todd, I'm showing you a state's exhibit 16 that's been admitted to evidence. This is the pet carrier, correct? Yes, it is. And that's where it's lo that was where it was located in the red shed. Yes. And you saw a lot of pictures yesterday and the day before about the red shed, from the red shed. Yes. And those were true and accurate depictions of the way that the red shed appeared on the day of Amy's murder. Yes. And when you walk into the red shed, it's a pretty narrow space, correct? Yes. When you, and correct me if I'm wrong, when you walk in, you turn to the left, I'm sorry, you turn to the left, and that's where Amy's body was found. Yes. So you walk in, and you saw pictures yesterday. It's, it, you couldn't get the door open, right? Because it was frozen shut. Yes. So you walk in, and if you go straight to the left, there's a very narrow uh, pathway. Yes. And that's where Amy's body is found. Yes. And she's found on her hands and knees. Yes. And she's found with a corn rake sticking out of her back. Yes. And then if you go past where Amy's body was found, you turn right. Is that correct? Yes. And there's almost like a, with the crates in there, it almost is like a, almost like a path. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you turn right. And if you look in this photo, uh, exhibit 16, you kind of see once you turn right, that little uh, passageway. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And there's an auger there. You see that at the bottom of this photo. Yes. And when once you make that right turn and you're looking down into the red shed, what's on your right-hand side? As soon as you turn? Yes. Uh, I think there was chemical totes. And what's on the left side? Uh, there was some jugs and junk there at first, and then there was some saddle tanks. And then, so where is this pet carrier from once you turn right after you, after you found Amy's body? Is it on the right side or the left side? After you turn, it'd be on the left. Okay, so this picture here would be? 
looking down and this pet carrier would be on the left. I think you just said that. Does that make sense? If I would be on the other side looking okay. this way. And this also isn't, um, you indicated that there's items on both sides, right? Yes. And it's also, um, it's not a huge passageway or a huge area, is it? Depends where you're at. Okay. So where the pet carrier is, how wide is it? Between the pet carrier and the wagon, probably, I don't know, five or six feet. Okay. And this is where the pet carrier was that day, correct? Yes. And this is uh, the photograph, you know, that the police took this photograph after Amy's murder. Yes. And this is the specific pet carrier that you and Tristan together asked Amy to go and get. Yes. And you know that she had that procedure four days prior, correct? Yes. And you actually took her to that procedure. Yes, I did. And you brought her home from it. Yes. And you actually, um, you actually signed your name on her discharge papers, correct? Because she was being discharged to you. Yes. And it said on there that she's not to carry anything over 10 pounds, correct? She was recommended not to carry okay. anything over 10 pounds. But you felt at that point she was fine to go and get the pet carrier, right? You, meaning she could carry something over 10 pounds. You thought she could handle it. She, she said yes. And you thought she could just take it and, you know, bring it out of that passageway and into that narrow area. I hadn't been over there for a couple months. But you knew where it was. Yes. And this is your property. Yes. This is your shed. Yes. You've owned this shed for how long? As long as I've been there. So since 1999 when you bought this property. Yes. And it sounds like you care a lot of, you, or you spend a lot of time on your farm, so you know where stuff is at on your property. Yes. Now, it's at that point, or I'm sorry, you see Amy leave. And you and Tristan are in the barn, the hog barn. Is that right? Yeah. And you don't see Amy for how long? And as long as it took to finish, about an hour. Okay. So during that time, or I'm sorry, after that time, you said that you realized that the pet carrier wasn't by the shop. Yes. And who's the one that says, oh, man, the pet carrier's not there? You or Tristan? I think I commented that it wasn't over there, and then Tristan said it isn't. And then whose decision was it? I believe yesterday you said that Tristan said, I'll go check. He asked, do you think I should go check and see what's going on? Okay. So he went, he didn't go to check on Amy in the house, right? No. Because your assumption would be, that if it's an hour's time that Amy would be in the house, right? Yes. That she would have gotten that pet carrier or couldn't get it and went back in the house. Yes. But tr it was Tristan's idea to go and look for Amy. We had told her that if she couldn't get it, it would be fine. Then go in the house. Okay, so you told her it was fine. Did you tell the police that when you talked to them after this happened? No. So then at that point, you're, you're taking off your boots, right? Yes. And Tristan goes to the red shed. Yes. And you hear Tristan scream for you. He yelled, yes. Yelled, I'm sorry. And you run over there. After he yelled a second time, yes. And you run over there and you go into that red shed and you see your wife on the ground. Yes. And how, what, just explain to us the position you saw Amy in. She was more or less hunched up in kind of a, I guess you'd call it a fetal position. Was she like, on her knees? Yes. And were her hands down like you just indicated? Kind of, uh, the palms are down, if, if you remember. I don't know if I remember how her hands were sitting. Okay. They were, they were, she was hunched up with her jacket hunched up. And I think you told, okay. And you see, you see this corn rake sticking out of her. Yes. You have your phone on you. Yes. You don't call 911 right away. No. You immediately try to pick her up. No. I looked, I looked and I 
turned her face towards me to see if she was breathing or alive. And I was t talk or asking her name, Amy. Then she's not responsive at all. No. And that rake is still sticking out of her. Yes. Now, just give me one second. Todd, I'm showing you exi uh, State's Exhibit 21. Is this the area that you actually saw, Amy? Yes. So there's like a, a rag. It looks like a blue or gray rag on the bottom there. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Yes. In relation to that rag, where do you see Amy's body? It was actually where the doors come together, where the, where the white-looking rag was. Oh, I'm sorry. So <clears throat> past that blue rag, you see the white rag on the floor. Is that correct? Yeah. And then to the left of that, there, it does look, uh, there's like almost like an opening between the doors. Yes. And that's where you saw Amy's body. <clears throat> she was right on the... Where the doors come together. Where's her head? Her head is down right on the edge of the, where the edge of the concrete. And is her, which way is her head facing? Which is way it, is her head facing? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm More sorry. or less straight down or slightly out? Is it, is it facing towards where you enter the barn or away from where you enter the barn? Or the red shed, I apologize. Her head was towards the opening where you go in. And the rake is impaled in her back. Yes. And it's sticking out. Yes. And it, it, it has a handle, but it's a broken handle. Yes. So what is, where's, the, where's the handle of the rake? Which direction is it going? Is it going towards those crates, or is it going towards the door, or where is it at? Towards the crates. So at that point, you lift up Amy's head, and that's when she's not responsive. She's not responsive. And Tristan is right there. Yes. Your 13-year-old son. Yes. And Tristan is about to pass out, correct? Not at that time. I was aware I didn't look at him. Okay. Well, when, you, when you're interviewed by John Turbot on November 16th, 2018, you do tell him that at this point you look at Tristan and you think Tristan's about to pass out. I thought um, he was about to pass out after I was carrying her out. Okay. So it wasn't until that time you realized that. Yes. And so Tristan's standing right by you. He's behind me. Yeah, behind you. You then decide to lift Amy up. I pulled her away from the door. And so how did you pull her? You just, did you push her, pull her towards you? No. She was leaning up against the door, right where the doors come together. I had my hand on her face and I reached over to her right side. I pulled her away from the door slightly to see if I could get her up. And you weren't able to get her up? The handle, when I pulled her over, contacted the chemical tote. So then at that point, you decided to t take out the rake? Yes. And I think you indicated you had to kind of manipulate it, pull it out. Not really. Not really? No. Um, so it was pretty easy, it just popped right out? It seemed to pull right out. Even it's on a curve, right? You didn't have to. You didn't have to do anything but just pull it right out. It pulled straight out. And then you, I think you just threw it, right? You just threw it. I had it in one hand. I had her in the other. So you're holding the corn rake. Then what do you do? I threw the corn rake, and then I got under her armpits, so and lifted her up. You, you actually pick her up by her armpits. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And what do you? Where does where does her body then make contact with your body? In my chest. So you're holding her. Where's her face? I, right in this area, right in my chest. And is it almost like you're bear hugging her and holding her at the same time? Is that fair to say? In a way, yes. And at that point, you don't yell to Tristan to call nine one one. No. You don't call nine one one. I don't know if he had his phone. Uh, but you had your phone. Yes. And then, is that when you tell Tristan to go get the truck? Yes. And where's the truck located? I don't remember exactly where it was. I told him to go get it. Okay. And so 
while Tristan's doing that, what are you doing? I'm in the process of getting her out of the shed. You're getting her out of the shed. Are you, does Tristan pull up the truck? Yes. And he pulls it right up to like the door of the red shed? No. Where does he pull it? He pulls it. There's a U-shaped driveway and then there's a small driveway that was behind, that connects the red shed to the other driveway. I, it's hard to explain. So how far would you say from the red, red shed he pulls up? I say 30 feet, 40 feet. So you're carrying Amy for how long would you say? It took a lot of manipulation to get her out and then I picked her up and I was carrying her like this in both arms. So how, you're asking time? Do you know how far, how long? A minute, two minutes? Maybe a minute, I'm estimating that. So then Tristan pulls up the truck and he gets in the front passenger seat. He comes out, that's when he was shook up. Okay, that's when you think you, you thought maybe he might pass out. Yes, he was, he just saw me carrying her and, and then I told him to open the door up. This is very traumatic for both of you. Yes. I mean, so he gets in the front seat. Yes. In the passenger seat. Yes. And it's at that point that you put your wife on top of your 13-year-old son. You lay her yes. body on top of his. Yes. Okay. Nobody's in the back seat. I know it's a truck. Nobody's back there. There was nobody else. And Amy's bleeding, correct? I didn't see her bleeding. Okay. You pulled that corn rake out. Yes. And you said yesterday you're a doer, right? You're a doer. That's why you didn't call 911. That's why you pulled that rake out. Yes. That's what, uh, and you, um, I mean, being a farmer, I'm sure that there's always things that happen, right? You are always having to, you're handy, you're always trying to, f I'm sure the kids are getting injured on the farm doing stuff, right? You're a good dad. You have to make sure that you're there for them and helping them. Yes. And you know, have you ever heard that you should never pull something out of someone when, when they have something in them, a knife or a fork or anything like that? I didn't never heard that. You've never heard that. No. You, you've never seen that. I know you said yesterday that you love to watch all these shows and you guys like to watch all these things about ancient tribes and all that stuff. You've never, in any anything that you've ever watched, ever heard that if somebody's impaled with something, you shouldn't pull it out of them. I didn't recall it at the time. So you may have heard it. You just weren't thinking about it then. I wasn't thinking about it at that time. And so you didn't see Amy bleeding at that point. No. So you lay Amy on top of Tristan, and then you run to the front, I'm sorry, the front driver's seat. Yes. And you start driving. Yes. And your goal at that point is to get Amy to the hospital. Yes. That's, I mean, that's all you're focused on. Yes. And you want to make sure she's okay. Try and get her help, yes. How far, what hospital were you driving to? I was going to try to go to Manchester. And how far is that from your house? Fifteen minutes. It's... You said yesterday, after you pull out of the, the driveway, that's when you think, oh, now I'm going to call 911. Yes. And you pull your phone out of your pocket. Yes. You call 911. Yes. Now, let's talk a little bit about this corn rake. You saw it. I know you saw it in court here, and you've seen it before because it's your corn rake, correct? It was on the farm when I bought it, yes. And so you've had it since 1999? No. Oh, you just said it was on the farm when I bought it. It was on the farm across the road when I bought it. Okay. So what? do you know what year that was? 2012. So you've had that rake since 2012. Do you know how the handle got broken? No. And is that is that corn rake always left in the red shed? No. Uh, where is it usually at? It was in the barn across the road. It was in the shop. Before the time that you see it sticking out of your wife's back, when was the last time you saw it before that? The last time I saw it, I think, was on the grass. And when would that have been? I'd say earlier in October. Okay, I was so filling up the combine fuel. So within a month before Amy's death. 
Yes. So you don't know where it was. You didn't. You yourself didn't know it was in the red shed. Uh, I think I did. You did on November tenth. You knew it was in Amy's. I'm sorry. On November tenth, you knew it was in the red shed. If I had to think back, yes. Okay. So I thought you just said a minute ago that the last time you saw it was on the grass somewhere. It was on the grass, and then I had to move it, and I put it in the red shed to get it off the grass. Okay, I'm sorry. So in sometime in October, you saw it on the grass. Yes. And you moved it inside the red shed. I set it inside the door. And when you set it inside the door, we've talked about when you walk in, did you set it on the right-hand side or the left-hand side? I don't remember, but it was probably the right. And you just set it there. I put it inside the door. Didn't like hang it up or put it in a certain area or on top of anything. I don't remember. Now, are there any other type of rakes in that red shed? Not that I can recall. Um, what else is in, I know we talked a little bit about it. In that red shed, there's the augers and there's a lot of crates and stuff like that. Is there anything else that's in there? There's the sweep augers there that you see. Um, there's a wagon with fertilizer tanks on it. And when you say a wagon, what do you mean by wagon? Excuse me. Just to explain. It's an old hay rack with the the side, the top cut off, and it's got fertilizer tanks on it. Now, while you and Tristan were in the in the hog barn, you're working and Tristan's working, right? Yes. And the hog barn is about the size of a football field. Yes. And Tristan's 13. He knows what he's doing, right? He yes. knows how to help you farm. Yes. And you're, you're doing stuff and he's doing stuff. Yes. And you're not listening to any music. No. And it's just a November morning when you guys are, are working in there just like any other day. Yes. You don't hear anybody outside when after Amy leaves the hog barn. I did not hear anybody outside. You didn't hear any trucks pull up or cars? I heard, the only thing I heard was maybe a few semis going down the road. That, because uh, the road is, is pretty close right off. When you turn into your uh, farm, the road is, you, you obviously turn off the road, correct? Yes. And you kind of have a, I know we looked at the picture yesterday, you kind of have like a, not a full circle driveway, but it kind of goes in a half circle, would that be fair to say? Kind of. Sure. Yes. And, and that's the the road onto your farm. Yes. So you can hear you can hear some semis going by. Sometimes. And do you remember that day if you actually heard semis? I wasn't paying attention. And you didn't hear though anybody drive onto your driveway or drive onto your property. I did not hear. You did not hear anybody walking outside. I don't know how I could. You didn't see anybody, right? How could I? Well. You, there's some windows out of the office, right? I wasn't in the office. Okay, well, so at no point you went to the office? No. And you don't hear... How, how far is the red shed from the hog barn that you were in? Depends where you're at in the hog building. Okay, so tell me, can you approximate? From the very southwest corner of the North Hog Barn to maybe the northeast corner of the Red Shed, I would estimate it at 150 feet. Okay, so that's from the furthest, so if you go the furthest corner away from the Red Shed, that's 150, is that, no. is that right? Okay, so I'm sorry. The closest points. The closest point you said is 150 feet? I would say. And the farthest point is what, if you had to guess? It would be 150 feet plus, plus a football, football field. field. Yes. And at no point do you hear Amy screaming. No. You don't hear any signs of any struggle. No. You hear nothing. No. Just you and Tristan working. What we're doing, yes. Now, after this happens, you go to the hospital, correct? Yes. And at the hospital, family starts showing up. Yes. 
your parents show up? Those family and friends show up, yes. Okay, so your parents, your sister Lynn shows up, correct? Yes. Uh, Bob and Eileen, Amy's dad and stepmom show up? Yes. Eventually, Peg and Randy show up. They're coming from a little bit further. Yes. And um, then there's also, I, I think there's some more family, too, showing up. Yeah, Jeff showed up. and There's um, fa friends, like you said, some friends are showing up. Yes. Um, Amy works at the hospital. Some people are stopping by that she, that she used to work with. Yes. And um, and and everyone keeps asking you what happened. Not everyone. Well, you remember talking to Bob and Eileen about what happened, right? He asked what happened. Yes. And you you told him, I don't know. She fell on a corn rake. I said I re I really don't know, Bob, what happened. Okay. You never said she fell on a corn rake. I don't recall the conversation. You said it in the 911 call that we listened to, right? Yes, I did. You said she fell on a corn rake, right? Yes. You also said I sent my son to go find her, right? Yes. Now, that same day, you're at the hospital, and uh, Deputy Thompson asks to talk to you for a little bit. Yes. Remember that? And there's a video of that, right? I've never seen it. You've never seen it. But you remember talking to him. I remember talking to him twice. And it's um, shortly after Amy is pronounced dead. I, yes, I think so. I don't know the exact I, I don't time. know the exact okay. time before or after. And he just wants to talk to you about what happened. Yes. And you start telling him about your day. Yes. And you tell him about how Amy was dizzy. Yes. And how you sent her, or you sent her in to get the pet carrier. You, everything that you said today, right? Whatever I said at the time, yes. And you insist several times. So you you keep telling him that Amy was dizzy that day. Do you recall yes. that? Yes. And that he asks you, a deputy Thompson asks you, were you with Tristan the whole time? And you say, Yep, we were together the whole time. You remember that? Yes. And at that time, you do say a couple times, I, I, I don't know. I want to know what happened. You say that, right? Do you remember saying that? Yes, I do. And you say, man, I want to go back. I want to go back to the farm and see for myself. How could this, how, how would this happen? You say that, right? I was, that was at the sheriff's office, yes. Well, you also say it to, to Deputy Thompson, don't you? Initially at the hospital? I don't remember. I was asked multiple times by. And at that time, you don't say anything about, wait, I have cameras. Let's go see if we can catch something on camera. You don't say that to Deputy Thompson, do you? No. Because at that point, you don't know that they're not working, right? No, I did not. Because according to you, those cats probably just did it. That's what you After, think. Afterwards, yeah. So then in a, li a little bit later, you talk to Sheriff LeClaire. You recall that the same day? Yes. And with Sheriff LeClaire, Luke Thompson is also there from the, the deputy, or Deputy Luke Thompson is also there. Yes. And when you're talking um, to them, again, you keep talking about how Amy was dizzy that day. Because you're telling, you're telling what happened. Yes. And you're asked <clears throat> if anybody else was on the farm or if you heard anybody, and you said no because you didn't, right? Yes. And you again say that you were with Tristan the whole time. Yes. And this, do you, do you, if you remember, I know it was a really difficult day for you, but do you remember how much time from the f interview with Deputy Thompson to the interview with LeClaire and Thompson? Well, I remember Luke asking me two different times at the hospital. Okay, that's right. I'm sorry. You talked to him twice. And then he asked me if I could go downtown. So would it be within a few hours, would you say? Yeah, it was within, I would say, an hour. So then you go, you actually go to the Delaware County Sheriff's Office. Yes. And during that interview, you never say, oh, wait, I have cameras. Go, let's go check them. I never said. And obviously your mind's racing. You're trying to figure out what happened, right? Yes. But you never think about that. At that time, I'm sorry. At that time, because it was inside the shed. And... Well, but you said yesterday that the next day, then you thought of it, right? You thought, oh, I'm going to go check those cameras. 
right? Yes. And you went to go check them because your wife was just had a horrible accident and died. Yes. So you thought of it the next day. Yes. Even though there wasn't a camera in the red jet. When I talked to family, when I got home. Oh, they reminded they, you. They said, I wonder if, if something will come on, would be on the cameras that would show maybe some sign of anything. And that's when you go and you go into the shop and you see, oh, they haven't recorded. Right? I see the antennas on the ground. Everything was off. Or and then, not, not on the screen. But then you make sure, to make you kind of get them working again. Yeah, I got them up on the window, so. Now, obviously, this is a very traumatic time for you. You guys have Amy's services, and you're, you're grieving with everything, right? Yes. And um, several days go by, and you still think this is an accident. Yes. Because you can't think of another explanation. Yes. And on November 16th, 2018, you still think it's, it's an accident when you go to the police station and talk to Agent John Turbot. Yes. And you th still thought it was an accident, even though you found her on her hands and knees, face down, correct? Yes. Even though a corn rake was sticking out of her back. Yes. You're still just thinking, I can't believe that this happened. I can't believe she fell on a corn rake. That's what you're thinking. I had no idea what happened. So on November 16th, 2018, you speak with John Turbot. Initially, Sheriff LeClaire is in there, right? Yes. And then, and then it's just you and John. Yes. And you're talking about what happened. Yes. And that whole first part, you guys are just talking about your life, your farm, Tristan, your kids, how you're such a great dad, everything like that, right? Yes. And at the beginning of that interview, Agent Turbot asks you how things are going, how's your marriage? And initially you say, great, right? Because they were. Yeah. And then after a while, he says to you, all right, let's talk a little bit more about your marriage. Tell me the good and the bad. Is there any bad? And you do, you tell him about that first affair. Yes. And you tell him that you found out about it and that, you know, you guys reconciled. Yes. And you tell him since then things have been great. Right? For the most part, yes. You tell him that. Uh, you guys were able to work through that, go to a little bit of counseling, and move forward. Yes. And that was when Amy quit working at the hospital, and you, you, you said because your family was really important to you, you wanted to just go keep going, right? Yes. So then Agent Turbot asks you, anything, since then, since that affair, the last five years, how have things been going? And you say, you keep telling him, great, they go, they're great, Right. I don't remember what I said, but yeah. Well, you I watched think the, I, 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 yes. You watched the clip yesterday, yes. right? The first clip yep. started with him asking you, how have the last five years been? And you say, great, we're so open. It's been awesome, right? Because it has been. Yes. And he says to you, anything else, anything you need to, a, 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 any problems, anything? And you say no. Right? When we resolve our problems. Right. He says, in the last five years, anything you want to tell me, you say no. Yes. And it's at that point that Agent Turbot brings up Jerry Frazier and doesn't, he just says to you, hey, do you have a Jerry Frazier that works on your farm? And you say, yeah. Yeah. Because he does, right? He, he, was, he would come, he would help with the hogs and everything. Yes. And John, a Agent Turbot goes on to ask you, how's your relationship with him? You say, fine, because it is. You told us that, right? Yes. And then he asks you about Amy and Turbot, or I'm sorry, Amy and Jerry's relationship. And you say, good, it's business, not, nothing, nothing to cause me any concern. Yes. And he even, he, he, he asks you at the end of that conversation, before he walks out of the room, anything else I need to know about Jerry Frazier? And you say no, right? Yes. Which was not the truth, right? Because you didn't tell him at that point about the fact that you confronted Amy and Jerry about the affair. You didn't bring I, it I didn't bring it up that you, you time. You didn't bring it up then. He leaves the room, right? Agent yes. Turbot, sorry. And about three minutes later he comes in, gives you some water. Yes. And it's at that point that you do as soon as he walks in, you say, you know what? I want to tell you something. There was something with Jerry and Amy. Right? 
Yes. And that's when then you tell him that, um, that you know, initially you say, that, you know, I was a little bit uncomfortable, but it wasn't a big deal. But then I told them, you know, keep it professional, right? Yes. And, and that's what happened. Yes. You just wanted them to keep it professional. Yes. Now, you and John then go on to talk about, about this, and, and you say you put that past you, right? Yes. And, and that's, what you, that's what you told us yesterday. You put this all past you. Yes. There's some rumors that come out in August, but you weren't concerned about them. Right? Not after Amy and I talked, no. Right. Because you felt confident that Amy wasn't doing anything. Yes. Now, back to this interview on November 16th. Up until that point, for six days, you're dealing with Amy's death, right? Yes. And you're taking care of the kids. Yes. And you're arranging pretty much everything for her services and just obviously did. I know your family's helping you. Is that right? Yes. And um, obviously, this, this, this is a tough time for you. Yes. And you're really upset. Are you upset? Would it be fair to say you're upset, obviously? Yes. And, I mean, you're at that point, you told me you still think it's an accident because you had no other explanation. Yes. So Agent Turbot tells you that this is a homicide, correct? At some point, yes. You never even thought about it being a homicide at that point. I got to remember how he said it, but... Well... At some point, he tells you, we think you're responsible yes. for Amy's murder. At yes. some point, he says, you killed Amy. Yes. And he does tell you that at some point, the medical examiners have ruled it a homicide. Right? Yes, at some point. And that was not out in the news yet. You did not, that report was not released yet. So that's the first time you're hearing it. Yes. And you're, you didn't really respond. Would you agree with that? I didn't know what to think. Right. But some but Agent Turbot just told you that somebody came on to your property and killed your wife, and you didn't respond. I was dumbfounded. Right. Like, you couldn't even believe it, right? Yes. Because at this point, for six days, you're thinking it's an accident, and now somebody tells you that somebody came on and killed Amy when you were yards away, Right. Yes. Your, your wife, Amy was your wife, right? Yes. Somebody that you swore to love and protect, right? Yes. And you feel, I mean, this is somebody you care about. You have children with her, obviously, right? Yes. And somebody came onto your property right under your nose and killed her, right? That's what you're told. That's what I'm told. And, and you know that's true now because you heard all the testimony in this case, right? Yes. You know that somebody took that corn rake and stabbed Amy in the back two or three times. Yes. You now know this wasn't an accident. Yes. Later that same day, John Turbot is at your house with the other agents and officers, and they're executing search warrants, right? Yes. And he asks you to take him around again to kind of show him to go through your story. Or what happened, right? He has to see buildings, yes. And again, he says to you, Todd, this was a homicide, and you don't respond at all. Do you? No. You're still in shock. Is that, would that be fair to say? I was in shock, and I didn't, yeah. And he even says the word to you, we want justice for Amy. Do you remember him saying that no. to you? Oh, you don't remember that. And you at no point through that conversation that day when they're executing the search warrants say, say, say anything about any suspects? Or, I'm sorry, give, it, give them any ideas of who might come onto your property and kill Amy. I don't remember them asking me that. No, they wanted to blame me. At no point did you, during your interview with John Turbot, did you tell him, Anybody that you think would maybe want to kill Amy? No. And as you sit here today, you don't know who would possibly want to do this to Amy. No. And 
yesterday, I think you said Amy was social. She was all over the place. She had a lot of friends, right? I wouldn't say she has a lot of friends. Okay, so she has friends that she, she does friends. things with. And, but you had no, you, you still, as you sit here today, can't think of any person that would want to do this to your wife. No. Any person that would know that she was in the red shed at that exact time. You can't think of any person. Can you? Right now or then? Then. Could you think of anybody? I couldn't think of anybody then. Now, you, Terry Stainer was one of Amy's friends. Yes. And, oh, sorry. And you were friends with Terry, too. Yes. You liked Terry. You communicated with her. Yes. Amy was close to her and went out with her and did things with her, right? On occasion, yes. You saw those text messages that um, came in through, through Amy that you sent her, sometimes talking about Amy, right? Yes. You, you told Terry about um, your suspicions about the affair with Jerry Frazier, right? I told her about text messages. Told her about text messages, and you also uh, talked to her a little bit about those rumors that came out sometime in August, right? Yes. So, Todd, we talked about this a little bit. Let's go back to your flip phone. You have a flip phone that you cannot search the internet on, right? Yes. And your, you, that is, your Gmail account is toddmullis76 at gmail.com. Yes. And Amy had her own Gmail account, correct? Yes. And I believe it was mullisrn at gmail.com. Does that sound about right? Yes. And that iPad is yours. It's the farms. It's the farms. Well, um, there's a laptop at your home, correct? Yes. And that laptop is used for the family. It kind of stays generally in the kitchen or living room area. Yes. And then the kids, um, there was three Kindles that were recovered from your house, correct? You, yeah, I think does, so, yes. And then Amy's phone was recovered. I think you gave yes. that to the police. Um, and then this iPad. You recall that? You recall the police asking you about this iPad that day when you ex when they were executing the search warrants? They asked for all computers, yes. Okay. So they actually ask you, hey, do you have anything else? And you volunteer. You say, oh, I have an iPad, right? Yes. You say you do. And you say it's in your tractor. I said it's not mom and dad's. Okay. And you, you're there. Your sister Lynn is there, right? Yes. And you're talking to Agent Turbot and Travis Hemseth from the Delaware County Sheriff's Office? Yes. And you, uh, they ask you if you can get them the iPad. Do you recall that? Say that again. They ask you because you're... Yes, uh, sorry, yes, they ask me. If you can get it. And actually, it's your sister Lynn that calls your brother Mike and says, Hey, will you, br will you bring us the iPad? Yes. So a few minutes later, Mike comes and he hands you the iPad. He hands it to the deputies. He, he hands it to the deputies in front of you, right? Yes. And the officers ask you if that's your iPad, and you say, yeah. Yeah. And you say that um, it has a wireless, or uh, sorry, cellular service, so you can use it when you're, um, when you're out on the farm. If I'm out in the field. Field, I'm sorry. Um, because, you, you, so you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi. Yes. And, and they even ask you um, if, if anybody else uses it, right? I don't know if they asked me that or not. Well, they asked you that, and you said, sometimes the kids do. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, it, I and, can't remember exactly what I said. Yeah. Okay, and you heard your brother Mike testify yesterday that he remembers one time searching for, uh, for something on that iPad. That's what he said, yes. And he knew the password. Yes. And after this iPad is handed over to the agents, Travis Hemsath asks you for the password. Yes. And you don't give it to him right away, right? I hesitated because I've never been through this before. Right. I didn't know if it was... You had no idea what was I going on. I had no on. idea what was going on. And you look at your attorney, Bob Sabers. Yeah, I looked at him and... And yes. he, he says, go ahead and give it to him. Yes. And so you give it to him. Yes. 
And did you actually set up that iPad? No. Um, who would have set it up? Amy. So she set it up with your Gmail account? Yes. And you're, you're familiar, you have an actual Gmail account? That she set up, yes. Okay. But you, you sent emails from it? A few. So you understand, do you understand how Google works? Do you know how that works? No. Well, so on your iPad, you have a Google, a Google app, right? Or you can go to the Google website. Yes. Because so, so yes. we'll get into it, but some of yeah. those searches are yours, right? Yes. You, I mean, you admit there yes. are times you use that iPad to search things. Yes. So you know that you go and you can either go to the app or you can go to like Safari and go to Google through there. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, you also have a way on your iPad to get your Gmail, which is just your email. Right? I usually went on Safari, okay. put Gmail in, and then my email would. Then your email would pop up. And when you wanted to do a Google search, would you go to Safari or would you hit the Google app, if you remember? It was a button. Okay. I'd... But every time you went on that iPad, you didn't have to, um, you didn't go to settings and connect your Gmail account, right? Settings, no. No, because your Gmail account was already set to that iPad. I guess. And, and like you said, some of those Google searches were yours. Yes. But sometimes Amy would use your, use your iPad. She would use the iPad, yes. Okay. Um, Amy would physically use that iPad, right? Yes. Like to search things, obviously, yesterday, like that, that wedding stuff and bride stuff. I mean, like you said, you didn't do that, right? No, I did not. Pinterest, none of that stuff. No. That wasn't you. Um, but there are lots of Google searches. I know it's like 80 pages. You said yesterday you briefly went over those Google searches, right? Yes. I think when your attorney asked you, you said that you started looking through them. And, um, but I mean, if you look through them, and I know you look through them briefly, there's lots of ones that you know you did do. Yes. That you actually typed in and searched things. Yes. And things about hunting and combines and bows and all kinds of things. Right? Yes. And um, in, on July 26, 2018, there's a bunch of searches about Jerry Frazier, Jerry Frazier's address, Christy Frazier, and you did those. Yes. And that was right around the time that you confronted Jerry and his wife. Or, I'm sorry, confronted Jerry and then called his wife. Right? Yes. And on that, on that, the day, a couple days before that, um, there's a search for menopause symptoms. And you told us you were looking up about whether or not you thought Amy was premenopausal, right? I don't remember when I looked that up. But you do remember looking it up. Yes. And you... And I know I asked you this. You have a flip phone, so you can't do internet searching on your phone. No. So your primary, when you would look things up, it would be on that iPad. That or on the computer. Or on the computer. Whose Gmail account was connected to the computer? All of ours. Okay, well. We, I, I don't know whose. You don't know whose was, okay. I'm not. So it would be, um, but you, all right, sorry. So in... So, let's see, sorry. On December 25th, 2017, there's a search for was killing more accepted centuries ago. Did you do that search? I think Amy did that. Okay, so you remember? You I remember think we were that. looking it up together after we, wa uh, we watched a documentary on... On, on December 25th, so you guys were watching um, a documentary on Christmas. Yeah. Do you remember that? Okay. And then... Now, I know yesterday you were asked about the search, uh, boys being raised like pussies. you remember that? Yes. And you said you didn't do it, right? I didn't do the search, no. You think Amy did that one? We had talked about it, and so, I'm assuming she so you're did you're assuming it. she did You don't know if she did it. 
I don't know. Um, and it was because somebody at Wyatt's school was like, pick, was it Wyatt's, w w somebody from Wyatt's school was picking on him? I don't know if he was picking on him, but it was, it was, he was getting his money somehow. Okay. Which is also known as like a bully, right? Yeah. Now, on January 5th, 2018, there's a search for characteristics of cheating women. Did you do that search? No. Okay. Do you know who did that search? No. You have no idea? No. And just of, around that same date, there's a search for what did ancient cultures do to infidelity? Did you do that search? No. Again, you, don't, you have no idea who did that search? No. There's a search on here that same date. Um, 16 facts about cheating women. Did you do that search? No. And right, right around that time, did ancient cultures kill adulterers? Did you do that one? No. Now, um, let's see. A couple days later, there's search for thrill of the kill. Do you remember that one? Yes. And um, looks like there's a few visited sites. And then after, in that same bunch, there's search for thrill of the hunt. So did you do that one too? Yes. And then go one more, and it's actually typed in, once you hunt man, will you always feel the thirst? Did you write that too? Yes. Now, yesterday your attorney asked you about this series of searches that talks about being a biological, being the biological father of their children. You recall that? DNA. I, I'm yes. sorry, DNA. He asked you some questions yes. about that. And actually... The first search of that bunch is how to make sure your kids are yours, right? If that's what it says. And then there's then after that, it's biological father, things like that. That's what your attorney showed you yesterday. Does that does that kind of rem you remember those questions? Yes. So you you don't remember doing those searches either. No. You didn't do them. No. When do you learn about Amy's, or I'm sorry, when do you suspect Amy's having an affair with Jerry? Or are you worried about their relation, their relationship being more than just business? When I thought it was odd about Jerry was mid-July. Okay. Now, you heard, you've heard testimony from Jerry that his affair, that he did have an affair with Amy. Yes. And you were probably pretty shocked to hear that when you heard about that eventually yes and you heard testimony that that affair started in may 2018 right that's what i heard that's what you heard he said june so and on may 10th 2018 there is search there's a search for what happens to cheaters in history did you do that search no How about the search right after that? Once a cheater, always a cheater. Did you do that search? No. And right after that, typed in what happened to cheating spouses in historic Aztec tribe. Do you remember that one? No. And right after that, killing unfaithful women. Did you do that search? No. And the last one of that bunch is a visited site. Punishment is 18 months for killing cheating wife. Did you do that one? No. Do you know who did it? No. Now, yesterday you did talk about, you remember the searches on your iPad about um, swimming and buoyancy. Yes. So you remember that you're out by, and I, I apologize, I think you called it crick. Is that the right wording? We were in the pond. The pond. And that's the pond that you guys built on your farm. Yes. And that you and the kids are out um, swimming, and it kind of comes up as a joke, like, about about people drowning? No. Okay, what, I'm sorry. What 
Can you just tell me briefly about how that came about? We were all swimming in the pond. I sink real, I sink like a rock. The kid, the boys were floating and they were going amongst themselves, who floats better? And I made the comment that some people don't float as good as others. Okay, so then who actually physically typed in, are some people less buoyant than others? I did. You did. And then after that, you visited some sites, and then um, including bo something about relax and swim buoyancy. Does that sound about the right? The boys and I were looking at that, yes. So you're looking with, and uh, so this says here July 13th, 2018. So you're looking with, are you with Ta uh, Wyatt and Ta Tristan? I apologize. Are you with both of them? I think I was with both the boys, yes. Are you with Taylor, too? Taylor might have been there, too, at home. So... At this time, Tristan's 13, Taylor is 10 or 11? She'd have been 11. And then Wyatt would have been how old? Eight. So you're with your 8-year-old, your 10 and 11-year-old, and your 13-year-old, and you're looking up buoyancy and people sinking and swimming. Actually, Tristan would have been 12. Oh, sorry, 12. That's when you're, so that's, are you guys searching this out when you're by the pond, or is it when you're back home? We got back home. Okay. Now... In July 21st, 2018, there's some searches for, can my husband read my deleted texts online? Did you do that search? No. So, and I know there's some other ones around there about text messages on phone and stuff like that. You didn't do those? No. Now, You confront Amy about the affair and Jerry about the affair at the end of June, right? No. I'm sorry, July. I apologize. At the end of July. Does that sound about right? I asked right? Amy. Um, she was texting a lot one day, and I asked her, well, who are you texting? And does she tell you Jerry? No. But you actually, at some point, do look at some phone bills. Yes. And you see that there's a lot of text messages between them. Yes. And then that's when you say something to Jerry. Yes. And you say something to Amy. Yes. But you're, to like you told us, you're totally satisfied after that conversation. I was a little unsure yet. So you're a little bit unsure, and then a month later, you hear that there's rumors going around. Right? After I called Jerry... I talked with Eileen, and then I called his wife. Right. A couple days later, I put it to rest. You put it to rest. And then about a month later, it might not be a full month, but sometime in August, you hear that there's rumors out there. Amy told me there's some rumors. And you didn't believe them. Did you? No, I asked. We talked about it, and I asked, what, where would that have started? And so then you talked about it, and again, you felt satisfied. You moved on. Yes. Now, on August 9th, 2018, there's some Google searches for how long can you survive without food. Did you do that search? Yes. And same group search, searched for how long you can survive without water. You did that one, too? Amy and I did. Okay. And um, searched for what lost, what lost in extreme cold and no fire, which is best way to survive. Was that you or Amy? It was either one or the other. We were helping Taylor. Okay. Um, searched for heat stroke symptoms in that same Yes. Group. Then you went to some websites and then searched for proper way to treat heat stroke. Yes. Then a, f a few minutes later, correct treatment for second and third degree burns. Yes. And keep going. What to do with a large open chest wound. Yes. That was either one of you. You can't remember. Right. Yes. And then the last one in that kind of group is um, skin, cold, clammy, pale, pulse, rapid, shallow breathing. Yes. And you guys were doing that because you were helping Taylor with some type of project. Is that right? She was taking her hunter's safety course. Okay. So these are all things that came up then. There was questions on the test. And so, and where did she take that course at? Online. So you, so you do remember, or it was either you or Amy helping. Well, you were both helping her. Yes. Now, let's talk about 
November 6, 2018. So that's the day of Amy's procedure, right? Yes. And this is is a somewhat s- simple procedure, right? What you knew of it. I know you don't know that much. Yes. So you took Amy there and brought her back. We voted. We went to the hospital. Okay. However long it took. And, and you remember that day Taylor was asking you some questions about Amy's surgery. She was asking all sorts of questions. Okay. And is she asking you or Amy or both of you? She was asking me because Amy was, I think, in the bedroom. Amy was in the bedroom. And so she's, um, and even, I mean, Amy came home and she was, she appeared to be okay, probably tired, right? Yes. And the kids, were they were able to still talk to her, right? Like she's probably laying, hanging out in bed, but she's not like not available for them to talk with her. Yes. And Amy's both an RN and a medic, right? Registered nurse, and yes. she was a medic at different times for, is that the Delaware Fire Department or? Earlville. Earlville. And it's your testimony that Taylor asks you about Amy's surgery. Yes. She... And what did you know about Amy's surgery? You knew it was for, like, her lady parts. Would that be fair to say? Sure. Yes. Um, did you know what it was called? DNC or something like that. Okay. And did you know, did did Amy at all explain the procedure to you? Not really. Okay. So you knew she wasn't, so who actually types in organs in the body? Is that you or is that Taylor? I think I did. So Taylor asks you about Amy's surgery, right? Yes. And you tell her it's a DNC, I don't really know. Or is it, what do you say to her? If you, do you remember? I said it's, it was, mommy had a procedure done. They had to knock her out. And And Amy never indicated to you that any of her organs, she wasn't, she wasn't having surgery on any of her organs, was she? No. But when Taylor asks you about it, you decide to search for organs in the body, right? She was asking a lot of questions. So, but she was asking you questions about Amy's surgery. Yes. That had nothing to do with organs of the body. Yes. But you wanted to show her a picture. She asked if if they had monitors on her. She asked, what did they do? Did they cut her here? Did they cut her there? Okay, so then you, you didn't search like pictures of the body or anything else. You searched organs of the body. Right? Yes. And... Four days later, your wife's organs are impaled with a corn rake. Yes. After this happened on November 10th, 2018, you weren't arrested for almost three and a half months, correct? Yes. And the... Obviously, the kids are staying with you. You're taking care of them. Yes. I know there's a period of time that you actually stay at your parents with the kids, right? Yes. But you, obviously, that you're at that point, you and your family and Amy's family is all they have because Amy's gone. Yes. And um, every day you're picking them up from school, taking care of them with the help of your family. I know you're fa- correct? Yes. Judge, can I just have a five-minute break? Um, I just need to connect the speaker, and I just want to make sure, because I just have a few more questions. Yeah, we can take a real short break and give the jurors the chance to use the restroom. Uh, (laughs) Folks, remember the admonition. We'll keep this short. Report back to the jury room in five or ten minutes.
Please be seated, everyone. Ms. Hughes, go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Now, Todd, I just want to talk a little bit more about a few more things. So when you're at, when you, you call 911 on November 10th, 2018, and you pull over, because 911 tells you to, right? Yes. And you pull over, and they tell you to get Amy out of the car. No. Or, I'm sorry, to lay her flat. Yeah, I... Because they want you to be able to do CPR. You remember that? Because yeah. eventually you yep. do some CPR. Is yes. that right? And uh, just so that we can, where, where we all understand, where is it that you perform the CPR on Amy? I started in the truck. In the truck. And are you in the truck until Luke Thompson arrives? I'm standing... Or I'm sorry, you're like leaning inside the truck, would that be fair to say? Yes. And is Amy, is she seated in the passenger seat with the seat down? Yes. Or? Okay. So when they tell you to do uh, chest compressions, your half of your body's in the car and you're, that's what you're doing. You're using your mouth and your hands to do that. I did not use my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're just, uh, you're just pressing. Where's Tristan at that point? I told him to go stand by the road for when they, to flag him down if they were coming. So as you're doing those chest compressions, is anyone else there initially? No. And you're holding onto that phone and you're doing the chest compressions? I had my shoulder holding my phone against my ear. So at that point, the only, the only people in the car are you and Amy, right? Yes. And at this point, you don't at all think that Amy's cheating on you? No. You confronted her, you put it to bed. Yes. You, even after the rumors a month later, you still didn't think she was cheating on you because she told you she wasn't. Right? Yes. And even in those months, um, I know you told some people she was really moody. She was having some issues, right? She had a lot going on all summer. So she, she, because she had all the stuff going on in Ankeny, right? Yes. She was going up there. She was visiting a lot. She had her grandma die. Her uncle had problems. You said in those, in those two months, in, the, in September and October, she was gone about 30 days. There was a stretch in there. I, yeah. And she would come and go, but she was gone oh, quite a bit, right? Yes. And things are getting a little bit tense at home. No. So you're not upset at all about this? I was... Con I was needing help at home and I right and I, well I guess you could call it some tension I guess well and you're some. calling Eileen Fuller Amy's stepmother around this time right yes and you're telling her this is hard right I'm harvesting yeah. I'm yeah. taking care of the kids and I know yeah. Amy's got stuff going on but I need some help right yes and thankfully you have your family close by and they're helping a lot yes but still throughout those months where she's spending a lot of time in Ankeny, you're not worried that she's cheating, right? No. You know she's just dealing with her family, right? Yes. And it, would it be fair to say you almost like forgot about the whole thing with Jerry Frazier because you didn't think anything was happening? I, for, I did not put Jerry in and, at all. And so on November 10th, 2018, when this happens to Amy, you're not at all suspicious that she's cheating. That she's cheating, no. At that point, you're not, you don't have one worry that she's cheating. No. And when you're actually there giving her CPR and you're giving those chest compressions, all you're thinking about is your wife, right? Yes. You're thinking about how you're trying to save her life. Yes. And you're thinking you're doing everything. Because I think you even say on the 911 tape, I'll do anything, right? When they asked me to do CPR, I said, I'll do whatever and, will and, help her. And you mean that, that? You'll do anything at that point to help save your wife? Yes. And you start those chest compressions, right? Yes. And you heard that tape when we played it the other day, right? Yes. And at that point, what are you thinking when you're doing that? Trying to, trying to get her to come back. You're just trying to save her. Yes. Right? Um, Todd, while you're doing those, do you, did you, 
I, I know it was kind of hard to hear on that tape, but you're doing those chest compressions. How long do you think you're doing them for? Not very long, a minute or, minute or two. And then I think it's Deputy Thompson shows up, and then yes. I, does he take over or somebody else takes over? He started. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, can I publish um, a, a clip of the 911 tape? Yes, go ahead. And just for the record, Judge, this is State's Exhibit Number 2. Now, Todd, here I'm going to um, I'm going to play you the part where you're doing the chest compressions, and I'm just going to ask that you listen in between the chest compressions, okay? No, Chad, did you just hear that whisper at the end of that? Yes. And what did you whisper? I couldn't hear it. Okay, I'm going to play it again. Todd, do you whisper cheating whore right there? No. So you don't remember what you whispered? No. Okay, I'm going to play another clip for you. Do, do you know what you whispered there? No. Did you hear that? So I'm going to play that part one more time. The first clip is 653 of that second tape. And this second one is right at 7, um, I'm sorry, 0700. Just try to listen really closely. I just want to know if you remember what you said. Right there, do you say, go to hell, cheating whore? No. So you don't hear that? No. You didn't hear at 653, cheating whore? You didn't hear that? I didn't hear that word. And it's right at that, after you hear a ping, you don't hear, go to hell, cheating whore? No. I have nothing for the judge. Any redirect? Todd, uh, the state asked you if Amy wanted to quit the hospital after this first affair. Remember that question? Yes. Did she, do you remember her announcing to her friends and coworkers that she was leaving the hospital? Yes. How did she do that? She did a... Uh... Facebook announcement, and she even had a a party at a bar. Okay. When when you and Tristan realized that the pet carrier wasn't up by the shop door. What did the two of you try to figure out, or what did you decide to do, I guess is the better question. We were just talking, I wonder why, why it wasn't there. What, she either couldn't, you know, we were thinking that she either couldn't get it out of there, or she didn't even attempt. She didn't even go over there in the first place? One or the other. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to follow some questions along so they may jump around. Um, there was a series of questions about where Amy was located when you first saw her in the shed. Um, and... They also ask you about your knowledge of, of the 
advisability of not pulling something out of a person that's penetrated them. You remember those questions? Yes. Were you able to get Amy out the door with the whole with the fork stuck in her back? There's no way. So you didn't have a choice. No. You were also asked about when you last saw that fork, and you said something about the grass on the grass, and that you moved it. Yes. In that shed, um, in, have you looked at all the photographs that the state took in there? Yes, I think so. Were there any children's toys in there? Yes. Well, what were there? There was a multitude of stuffed animals and play items on the wagon. The kids obviously played out there then. Yes, they played a lot. And things might get moved out of the sh shed that shouldn't be? Yes. You told the, the uh, state that while in the hog barn that morning, you never went to the office. Is that correct? After she left, I never went to the office. Right. Did, you go, did you go through the office when you left, though? Yes. Were you in the office when you and Tristan looked out and, and didn't see the pet carrier? Yes. There also was some questions about the closest point between the hog barn and the red shed. And you t tell us again what that would be. I estimated at 150 feet or so. And that'd be from what point on the hog barn? The very, very southwest tip of the barn by the door that you go in and out to the very northeast corner of the red shed. And when you say the door, that's the door going into the office of the hog barn? Yes. Todd, why did you do the searches on or about, I think it was July 26th, for uh, Jerry Frazier and his wife? I was trying to find a way to contact Christy. Christy being his wife. Christy was his wife. I'm, I was trying to find a way to contact her. So this, if the search related to Jerry, you had Jerry's contacts. I had Jerry's contact, but I... I had no way of getting her phone number. On some of those entries, of those searches that uh, the state asked you a few of them about, uh, thrill of the kill, thrill of the hunt, hunt man, uh, thirst for hunt, that kind of thing, y you indicated you recognized those. Yes. And, and what did they relate to? There was a quote stated in a movie and it was actually ended up being Ernest Hemingway quote, and we were trying to remember what it was. Do you remember what the name of the movie was? Uh, I think it was Predators. Todd, did you ever have any doubt about you being the biological parents of your children? No. 
Do you have any reason to search for those DNA things? No, I have no reason to. When the state asks you questions about you contacting Jerry and his wife in July of 2018, they said, I think the words they used was, did you confront them about the affair? Did you, had you concluded that there was an affair? No, I did not. You had concerns about all those text messages? Yes. When you talked to Jerry, did he convince you that there was nothing going on? Yes. I mean, for the most part, yes. He was very convincing. Todd, when you were doing those chest compressions, in the, if, if I understand you correctly, you had put Amy somewhat upright in the seat of the pickup but leaned it back as far as it would go? Yes. So she was in a kind of a, a reclining chair position? Yes. And I, you were holding your, the phone and, and doing the compressions at the same time? Yes. You knew you were on a recorded line with a 911 operator? Yes. Were you, do you believe that you said, whispered, cheating whore or go to hell cheating whore while you were doing CPR? No. Were you frantic? I was very excited. Were you doing everything you could to keep her alive? Yes. No other questions? Can you recross? Just briefly, Judge. Todd, that first search about the DNA is how to tell if a child is yours, right? If that's what it says. And Amy gave birth to your children, right? They came out of yes. her body. Yes. And you also, um, your attorney just asked you about, you didn't really think they were having an affair in May. You were just wondering what's going on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, in uh, July. You were just wondering if Jerry and Amy, if there's something, they're talking too much. They were talking too much, yes. So you didn't really think they were having an affair? No. But you did text Terry Stainer. Do you think Amy's acting like she was before? Right? If that's what I text, yeah. And Well, you saw those texts, right? I don't... Do you remember seeing them the other day? I couldn't see the screen. Okay. But you, when you sent that text, you were referring to, is she acting like before, like having an affair, right? Yeah. And you called Jerry Frazier's wife. I know you called a second time to apologize, but you called that first time to see if she suspected anything. 